Masking in Lightroom is brilliant, but do you know how to use it properly or are you not using it to its full potential? Well, in this video, I'm gonna teach you all about it and make sure that you're using it to its full potential. Plus, I'm gonna give you all of the images that we are using in this video so that you can follow along with me. In the description, there is a link. Click on that link, download the pictures, follow along with me, learn some really cool stuff about Lightroom's masking, and let's do it. So the first option that we're gonna look at in masking is called Sky Select. Now, that does exactly what it says on the tin. It selects the sky and allows you to adjust it via its mask. Now this is particularly useful in landscape photography. When you take pictures of the land, especially in a sunset or a sunrise, it is very hard to get the exposure. Well, it's actually impossible to get the exposure right if you're shooting into the sun, okay? You need to use filters or multiple exposures and merge them, lots of things like that. But now what you've got is this option in Lightroom's masking, and it's brilliant. It really is good for balancing out the exposures of landscape photography. Okay, let's go into Lightroom and have a look. Now the image we're gonna use for that is this one here. Now this is a panorama. It's three pictures that were stitched together using Lightroom's pano uh, feature. And I've just cropped it basically. I've cropped it for you, so that's it. But apart from that, it's a raw file. And as you can see, the ground is a lot darker than the sky because you know, we're shooting right into the sun here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the sky select tool to balance out this exposure, okay? We're gonna darken down the sky and we're gonna brighten up the ground. So let's open up the masking panel by clicking the masking panel icon here. And then I'm quite simply going to click sky here. And that will add a new sky mask for me. And there you go, you can see it's done a wonderful job. It's selected the sky and it's feathered that selection into the ground for me as well. So now let's make some adjustments and balance out the exposure. So firstly, I'm gonna grab the highlight slider and bring that down and look at that. That's in there, look, that's in that raw file, it's brilliant. And in fact, I might bring it all the way down like that, yep. Um, let's see what's gonna happen with the shadows. Maybe lift them a little bit. Let's add a little bit of contrast as well, I think. I'll play with the blacks and just see. Yeah, that's not bad actually, yeah. Just a few like that. Maybe lift the shadows a little bit more and I'm just wondering if that's too dark or not, but we can always go back and adjust. So I'm just gonna leave it about there for now. So that bit was nice and simple, but how do we now brighten the ground, okay? Because it's a sky select. Well, you can invert and duplicate this mask, all right? It's as simple as that. And to do that, you come up to your mask one here. We are gonna click on them three dots and we're gonna come down to where it says duplicate and invert mask. And we're gonna click on that. And there you go, it's done exactly that. It's duplicated that mask and inverted it. And effectively now what we've got is the ground selected. Now what you can do at this stage, and what I recommend you do at this stage, is name your masks. It stops any confusion as to what is what. And it's really easy to do. We can come up to the three dots here again, click on them, go to rename, and this mask obviously we're gonna call ground, press enter. And if I come down to what is currently mask one, and I'm gonna come over to the three dots here, click on them, go rename, and call this one sky press enter so now if i want to work on any of these masks i will click on the mask that i want to work on so if i click on sky i'm back to adjusting the sky and then if i click on ground i'm back to adjusting the ground so now let's brighten up the ground i'll come down to the mask adjustment panel and i'm going to grab the shadow slider and i'm going to lift that right the way up like that Fantastic, let's see if I lift the exposure a little bit as well. Mm, just slightly, I think like that. Contrast slider, maybe just a tiny little bit of contrast. Lift up the shadows a bit more, some blacks in there. And then I'm gonna grab the highlight slider 
and drag that down. Because this is really clever. Because even though it's the ground mask, it feathers a little bit into the sky and the only highlight in this mask is the sunburst. So, so it's gonna do me a real favor here by just pulling down these highlights, just a little bit like that. Now what we can do is we can see the effects of each mask individually and all the masks together. And to do that, we can come over to the individual mask and click the eye symbol there. So that's without the effects of that mask and that's with Let's click on the sky one and let's hide the sky one and bring that back. So that's the effects of the sky mask. And then to look at the before and after of all the masks put together, it's this little toggle at the top here. Let's just switch the masks off. So that's without their masks and that's with them, without and with. Look at the difference there. That is a much more balanced exposure and it just shows you how good that sky select can be. So now I'm just gonna close the masking panel by clicking the masking icon again. And now I wanna make some holistic adjustments to this image. And what I mean by that is, I wanna make adjustments to the whole image and not just sections because you know, masking is to make adjustments to just sections, whereas we can make adjustments now on the whole image. So let's open up the basic panel first of all and play around a little bit more, not with the highlights, I don't think. The shadow's a little bit there like that. A little bit of blacks, a little bit of whites like that. I might pump up the vibrance. Oh, look at that. That brings out some color, doesn't it? Just pump up that vibrance just a little bit. And then I think I'll sharpen up the picture a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in to 100%. Yes, just make sure it's at 100% there. And then let's sharpen this picture by going to the detail panel. Let's drag this slider up to 60-ish maybe, 60, 70. Let's go for that. Let's grab the sharpening masking, not to be confused with the other masking that we're doing. Let's click the slider, hold down the Alt key and slide that across. And what that will do is take the sharpening effect off of the blank areas, the areas that we don't need the sharpening to be attached to. So where it's black, there's gonna be no sharpening meaning no noise is gonna be enhanced. And where it's white, that's where the sharpening is going to be attached to. Something like that will do. Let's hide the sharpening. Yep, that's without sharpening and that's with it. That's without and that's with it. So that crisps that up a bit. Let's close that panel. And now let's click back on the image to fit to screen. And this is the opportunity to, you know, take a step back and have a look at it. It might be, a little bit oversaturated, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave it like that for now, and it's also good for a video, actually, when it looks like this. So I'm gonna leave that. Let's look at the before and after. And look at that. That's the before, that's the raw file, and that is the processed file. I'm gonna zoom in on that sun so you can see it. And that is fantastic. And for landscape photographers, that little tool there is going to do you a massive, favor and you know you saw how quick that was to actually do and that is Lightroom's sky masking as you can see does a fantastic job different skies are going to work differently all right so just be aware of that it's not going to select the sky perfectly in every single picture but generally it does do a good job so if you are liking this tutorial so far why don't you come over and check out the full course over at the schooloffphotography.com. We teach Lightroom, photography, Photoshop, wildlife photography, macro, fine art and landscape and loads and loads of different things. And we teach them properly. At the School of Photography, you get structured professional education that ensures that you learn properly and you retain the knowledge and in turn, that is gonna make your photography 10 times better, I can tell you. So if you wanna learn photography properly, then come over and see us at theschooloffphotography.com. We've also got lots of free stuff over there so that you can try before you buy. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. So now we're gonna look at object masking okay so that again is very simple you can select objects 
on your image and, and make changes to them particular objects. You know, it really is as simple as that. Let's go into Lightroom and have a play. And the image that we're gonna use for this is this one here. Again, it's another stock image that I got off the internet and it's by the same person, actually. There's their name there. I'm not gonna to attempt to pronounce it, but you can if you want to. Now, as you can see in this image, we have effectively three objects, don't we? We've got a coffee cup, a pen, and a pad. Now, what we're gonna do in this particular example is we're gonna change the color of this coffee cup. So the first thing to do is to select the coffee cup. So I'm gonna come over to the masking panel, click the icon here to reveal it, and there you've got objects, okay? So I'm gonna click on objects. Now under select objects in our options here, in our mode, we have two modes. One is brush, and with that option you can brush over the object. And the other one is rectangle. Now with that option there, you draw a rectangle over the image. Let's just demo both of them now. So let's start by selecting the brush here. Now you can change the size of your brush here if you want to, or you can just use the scroll on your mouse and that will make it bigger and smaller. And quite simply, you paint over the object that you want to select, okay? And you don't have to be accurate at all. You just go like this, all the way over the object, paint it in, da -da -da, release, wait for Lightroom to do its thing, and there you go, right? It's selected that object, and it still amazes me like how it does it, but there you go. It's really, really good. There's a few bits on, the, on here that you can remove, but apart from that, it is really good. Now, I'm going to delete this mask and show you the other option, which is the rectangle uh, select option. To do that, I'm gonna come over to the three dots here next to the mask. I'm gonna click on them three dots and I'm gonna come down and go delete mask one and it deletes that mask for me. Now let's uh, start again. So I'm gonna click on objects and as you can see, it's gonna create a new mask and a new object mask there. And this time I'm gonna select the mode rectangle. Then I'm gonna come over to the image. I'm gonna draw a rectangle around the object, release, and there you go. It selects the object for me in pretty much exactly the same way as the brush did, all right? So different objects are gonna require different modes to use there, but I find the rectangle one does a pretty good job all the time. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it has also selected the inside of the cup holder, which we're gonna to need to remove, and it's also selected the froth of the coffee. Now. We don't wanna change the color of the froth. So we are going to adjust the mask in a minute by removing them two things. But firstly, let's change the color of the cup. And to do that, I'm gonna come over to the mask adjustment panel here, and I'm gonna come down to the hue slider, and I'm basically gonna move that around till I get a different color of cup. And I think a nice green, should we go for a nice greeny like that? Yep. That looks about right, okay. Now, of course, ignore the froth at the minute. We're gonna change that in a second, but just look at how good that has just changed the color of that cup. And now what we need to do is subtract from this mask the froth. Now, you can do that with the brush, all right? So a nice simple way is to click on the subtract button here, go to brush, and basically brush in here and get it all nice and neat, blah, 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 and subtract that mask from the foam area of this coffee, right? But I'm gonna do it a different way. I'm gonna press Control and Z just to undo that. I'm actually gonna subtract from this mask using the uh, object tool again, okay? So I'm gonna come over. I wanna subtract from this mask. So I'm gonna click Subtract. I'm gonna go down to Objects. I'm gonna select the Rectangle option, and I'm gonna draw a rectangle over the top of this coffee cup and release. And there you go, <laughs> that is a much easier way. It's so good, it's like, I don't know really what to say. It is so good, this new AI Lightroom masking that it's just unbelievable. But what's happened there is, because I've got a lot of contrast, I've got a white rim really around the top of this coffee cup. Lightroom has thought to itself that that's the object that circles the object and it's removed it for me in a much more quicker 
and a much more accurate way. Now I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit to this picture by clicking uh, 100 up the top here in the navigator panel. And I'm gonna hold down the space bar and move over to the top of the coffee cup. And you can see that there's a little bit of edge in there that we need to tidy up, etc. And we can do that quite simply by subtracting from this mask again, using a brush this time. So I'm gonna go subtract, I'm gonna select the brush. I want a really big feather on that brush. So I'm gonna leave that feather to 100. I'm gonna leave the flow and density to 100, make my brush a little bit bigger. And then I'm just gonna brush around the edge like that. You can see it just goes straight away. There we go. And then hold down the space bar and we've got a little bit around here to tidy up. And then we've got the inside of this cup holder. Now the color change actually don't show up that much to be honest in the middle here. The reason for that is it's white, you know, it's a white um, pad, isn't it, underneath here. So it's hard to change the color of white. But just to be uh, perfect, we are gonna subtract from in here with a nice soft brush, nice soft edge brush. There we go. And possibly around here a little bit. That looks all right to me, to be honest. Do we need anything around here? Nope, that all looks good. A little bit, a little bit here. So a nice soft brush, like that. Okay, hold down the space bar, click on the screen. We go back to fit view. And now let's come over to our mask. Let's hide that mask. That's the original color of the cup. And that's what we've changed it to. I think it's brilliant, okay? We can change the color of cups and the color of every, anything, as a matter of fact, using masking in Lightroom. Again, before and after. So that is object masking. Again, really simple to use. Some objects are gonna be easier to select than others. You're gonna figure that one out as you go through your Lightroom career. So now let's talk about people masking in Lightroom. It is a fantastic, it uses AI, artificial intelligence to detect people, but it also detects lips, eyes, the pupil of your eyes, hair. I mean, it's amazing when you see it happen. Let's go and see it happen. So the image that we're gonna use for this task is this one here. And firstly, before we go in to do any masking, I'm just gonna give it like a, a basic adjustment. And the first thing I'm gonna do is crop it because it looks like I was just trying to fall over when I took this picture, <laughs> it's just on the tilt. So let's crop it, I'm gonna grab the crop tool here, I'm gonna grab the edge, and we're just trying to get it a little bit more straight. And like that is fine, click the crop tool there to apply it. Then I'm gonna open up the basic panel and just do some basic adjustments to the whole image. So let's come down and uh, bring these highlights down, just to bring out these lights in the background a little bit. Okay, so bring them down. Lift the shadows just slightly, put some blacks in for some contrast, some whites there, a little bit of vibrance I think, and the next thing is I'm gonna sharpen it up, so let's click on the image, so it zooms into 100%, you can also do that up in your navigator there. I'm gonna close down the basic panel, open up the detail panel, and I'm gonna lift the sharpening up, that's 70 ish I think, something like that, okay, there we go. Let's look at the before and after of that sharpening. So that's with no sharpening, and that's with a little bit of sharpening. There we go, that is much better. Crisps it up just nice. I'm gonna click back on the image. I'm gonna come down to the masking slider in the sharpening panel, or in the detail panel. I'm gonna hold down the Alt or Option key. If you're on a Mac, I'm gonna click on that slider and I'm gonna slide it up because I only want the sharpening to affect the edges and texture of the image not the smooth background or the out of focus areas because if it affected them areas, you would enhance the noise in those areas as well. So somewhere, I think somewhere about there is good. Okay, let's close down the detail panel. So there's a few basic adjustments. Now let's go in and adjust just the person using people masking. We're gonna do that by clicking the masking icon at the top here. And then down the bottom here, you have people. I'm gonna click on this drop down arrow and it will say they're detecting people. And there you go, it detects people. It says they're like person one. And if I hover over, you can see that it has detected 
that person. Now, if you've got two or three or four people, whatever, in your picture, it will detect all of them people, as long as they're clear. I mean, if you've got like loads of little small people and they're crossing over, it's, it's gonna have trouble there. But if you've got clear people within your image, Lightroom will detect them and it will put them here in this box as person one, person two, person three, etc. Now, obviously we've only got one person in this and this is this one here, person one. So I'm gonna click on person one and then it's broken down this person into sections. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, look, so I've got the hair there, teeth, there's no teeth showing, so that's why you can't see that. Lips, um, iris and pupil. Then you go up to the next one here and it's called eye sclera, I think. I mean, I've gotta be honest, until this popped up in Lightroom, never heard of that. I just call it the whites of the eyes, right? So that's basically what that is, eye sclera, whatever. That's the whites of the eyes. We go up, we've got eyebrow, we've got body skin, and we've got face skin. So Lightroom is not only detecting a person, it's detecting all the elements of the face as well, which is extremely clever. Now to start with, I want to just adjust the entire person, all right? So I'm gonna make sure the entire person is clicked. I'm gonna click Create Mask. Now just to stop any confusion, because I'm also going to be working on the eyes here and the face, I want to name each mask, okay? It's gonna make my life easier going forward. So I'm just gonna click on these three dots here. I'm gonna go Rename. I'm gonna call this one Entire Person. And then I'm just gonna click OK, all right? Now the other thing that you've seen here probably is that it's not selected the entire person and this is gonna happen, you know, it's left a little bit down the bottom here. So I'm just gonna to add to this mask with a brush. So you come up to your entire person mask here, you click add, we go to brush. I'm just gonna make sure that I've got flow and density set to 100 and quite simply, I'm gonna paint in here and that was easy, right? So that's now added to that mask and now I definitely have got the entire person selected. Okay, let's make some adjustments now on this person. So I'm just gonna drag this down again so we can see the whole adjustments box here. And the idea of this edit here, this edit of this person or the edit of the whole picture, I want the person to sort of stand out a bit. I want the, the eyes to be a bit brighter and I want the face to be a little bit brighter as well. And that's basically what we're gonna do via the mask in here. So the first, first thing to do is to come up to shadows and try and lift them up slightly. Um, let's see if I bring down the highlights here. That's actually quite cool. Look at the hair, look. That's taking out the highlights uh, over the picture and let's put some blacks in a bit of contrast maybe. Lift up the whites only slightly there. And that's actually not looking bad for the whole person because it's just slight adjustments here just to make it zing a little bit, shall we say. And let's hide that effect and bring it back here. There you go, look. Just a very slight adjustment in the whole body. Very good. Okay, now let's just brighten up the face a little bit. So to do that, we are gonna go create a new mask. We're gonna go select people. We're gonna click on that person again, and we're gonna need to select every element of the face, if that makes sense. So we're gonna click the face skin. We're gonna click the eyebrows. We're gonna come down to the eye sclera there. I know I've said that wrong, but let's face it, it, just, it should just say whites of the eye, shouldn't it, right? We're gonna click on that there. We're gonna click on iris and pupils, lips. Um, we'll click on teeth because there is something slightly there that it's trying to grab. And now if I just move my mouse away from the panel, you can see that what it's selected, look, all that red there, it's what it's going to select which is exactly what we want, the whole face. So I'm gonna come over and click Create Mask. It creates the mask for me. And I'm gonna scroll up here in my masking panel because it's called it Mask One. And underneath, you can actually see that it's separated it into all of them separate areas that we ticked, you know, eye sclera, uh, iris and pupil, etc. But I'm gonna come up to the Mask One here, the main mask. I'm gonna click on them three dots. We're gonna rename this one face so we don't get confused, we're gonna click OK. Then we're gonna come down and brighten that face up. Okay, so let's come down to the shadows, lift them shadows up there. So already looking better, very good. Let's lift them right up to there like that. Bring them highlights down a little bit like that. And 
here we go, just like that. I think that's not bad at all, as a matter of fact. Let's hide that effect and bring it back. Yep, there you go. So that's without the face mask, and that's with the face mask. Without the face mask and with the face mask. Very good indeed. The next one that I'm going to add is the eyes. So I just want to bring them eyes out and uh, make them sparkle a bit. And to do that, we're going to click on create a new mask. Again, we're going to come down to select people. We're going to click on the person, but this time we are going to click on the eye sclera. <laughs> sclera. <laughs> oh, someone, I'm going to get some emails about that, but I'm pretty sure I'm saying it correct. And uh, iris and pupil. Okay, let's click on them too. Come over to the image there and you can see that that's, that's basically what it's selected. Look at that. I mean, it is quite clever because it's even selected half of the eye, you know, because the hair is over the other half of the eye there. So it's really quite clever, I think, anyway. So let's come over to Create Mask here and click on Create Mask. Again, we've got a new mask created up the top here and it's broke it into two separate parts. I'm going to click on these three dots. I'm going to go Rename and I'm going to call this one eyes and press enter. You can of course press OK if you want to. So let's come down to shadows this time and then let's lift them shadows up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to click, I'm going to hold down the space bar and click on the image so we can zoom in and see it better. There we go. Let's lift them shadows up. Look at that. I mean, that's doing a really good job, I think. Uh, and let's bring the highlights up a little bit. Yep. Bring them highlights up a bit. The white slightly, not the blacks, let's leave the blacks alone. The white slightly like that, let's hide that effect and bring it back. I mean, that's put some sparkle in the eyes, hasn't it? But you have to be careful with eyes. It could look good when you're zoomed in. We have to look, it has to look good when you're zoomed out as well. So I'm gonna hold down the space bar, click on the screen, and then I'm gonna hide that effect and bring it back. Hide it and bring it back. It's a little bit overdone. I mean, this is where you can use your amount slider here, you know, you can increase the effect or decrease the effect slightly. Let's have a look at that. That's not bad, is it? Hey, that's not bad at all. Now you can, of course, at this stage, go back and adjust their masks willy nilly, particularly because I've named them and it makes your life a lot easier. So we've got the eyes one there. If I, if I come down, I've got the face one. I can hover over, look, there's the face. There's the entire person, and then obviously, as you know, we've got the eyes. So at this point, you could go backwards and forwards and adjust them as you see fit. I think it looks all right, to be honest. I'm gonna hide all of the masks to see the effects. So that's without any of them masks. Bring it back, and that's with the masks. I mean, look at that. That is a dramatic difference. So now let's hide the masking panel. And I think that an image like this, where we've got a nice kind of bright face in the middle, needs a vignette. It is crying out for a vignette. So let's go and put that into the image. To do that, we're gonna come down to the effects panel, open it up. We're gonna grab the uh, amount slider here and I'm gonna drag it down. And I think something about like that. Okay, let's hide that effect and bring it back. And look at that. It's just drawing your eye now into the center of this image where we've got Rosie the model here looking straight at us. So let's hide that effects panel and now's the time to, you know, go over it if you want to with holistic edits just to do any fine adjustments. I'm not sure it needs it, I've got to be honest. I'm gonna click the basic panel and just open that up and maybe play with the highlights a little bit. Shadows a little bit, yeah, it doesn't really need it, yeah. I don't know what I'm mucking about for because I think it looks all right as it is, to be fair. So I'm going to close down that basic panel and now we're going to look at the image before and after. So that's the raw file and that's the edited file with all the masks. I'll just click on that so we can see it a bit better. And you can see how simple it was to make them edits and how dramatic, shall we say, that changes. It looks 10 times better, it looks crisper, more contrasty, more brighter, and it looks how it should look, as a matter of fact. Let's click back on that image to fit it on screen, and then go back to uh, loop view. So that is people masking in Lightroom. Absolutely fantastic, as you can see.
That is actually just a small part of what masking can do for your photography in Lightroom. If you wanna see the rest of what the masking panel can do for your photography, then come over to the schoolofphotography.com and you know, we'll show you the rest. Don't forget also that you can download all of the pictures that you've seen in this tutorial and you can follow along with me. Link in the description of this video, just click on that, download the pictures, follow along with me, and you can learn masking really well. Don't forget to also leave a comment and tell us how much you love the masking panel or if this tutorial has helped, then please thank us in the comments. We really, really love hearing from you. Like the video, share it with your friends. If you think that anyone else will benefit from this tutorial, click that share button and share it with them. All of those things really help us out at the School of Photography. You know, we really do need you. We need our viewers to like and share, subscribe to our channel, you know, and all of them things. So just to end on saying, I really do hope that you've liked what I've shown you here. I hope to see you in the next video. And remember, if you wanna learn photography properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com.